Hi, Rita. Welcome to Wigs.com. And we're so happy to have you here at Wigs.com. Thank you for joining us via Zoom. Yay. Thrilled um, to be here. <laughs> Thank you for the invite. Yeah, this is very different from for us because usually our videos are in person. But we did have Brittany in office yesterday and we presented her with a very great, great donation. We were finally able to raise 250000 So that's a great milestone. Yeah. Um, now, Rita, before we get into anything else, do you mind introducing yourself to our audience and to anyone who doesn't know you? Sure. Thanks, Sophia. I'm the VP of Partnerships and Development at BreastCancer.org. And I work with partners and donors who are um, providing support that fuels our mission um, and all the programmatic initiatives designed to support our patients and caregivers that rely on us. I've been with breastcancer.org for 12 years now. Um, and I consider myself a power user of the site when I was diagnosed with breast cancer myself 15 years ago. I was um, in a, a career with a, a major newspaper in the Philadelphia area, Philadelphia Inquirer Daily News at Philly.com. And at the time I was 45 years old and I um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. I really did not know many people within my age group at, who had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and, and so I had a lot of questions and uh, I was thrown into this world of, of breast cancer world with medical terminology and doctors telling me I needed to do this and needed to do that. Um, and really was just overwhelmed by the amount of decisions that I needed to make in, in such what appeared to be such a short period of time. Um, now, 15 years ago, uh, the internet was really just catching speed um, with still fairly clunky experience. The dial-up modem um, was nowhere near as the speed that we have today, but it was a resource for me uh, to be able to get the information that I needed to make the decisions that um, I needed to make for my personal care. Um, and I kept landing on breastcancer.org because it was really the only place that I found um, explained to me in simple language the information that I needed to know. And also um, there was a discussion forum 15 years ago uh, that there were other people like me who were exchanging information and sharing stories. And I found that to be extremely helpful. Um, now, fast forward 15 years, uh, as I said, I've been with breastcancer.org for 12 years now. Uh, and, you know, my, my goal in joining this team is, was and still is today to make sure that uh, anybody that is thrown into a diagnosis or caregivers or family member or work colleague that really needs to understand uh, more about breast cancer and um, the di diagnosis and their treatment options and treatment plans um, really have the resources that they need. Uh, so being a part of the breastcancer.org team um, allows me to to do that along with my, my colleagues. Our founder and chief medical officer is Dr. Marisa Weiss. Um, she is still practicing physician. Uh, she sees patients uh, every day. Um, she started breastcancer.org 23 years ago in the year 2000. Um, and again, 23 years ago, the internet was quite a big different place, uh, but she was committed as uh, a physician knowing that a short amount of time that people are in the doctor's office, they get overwhelmed with a lot of new terminology. They've just been diagnosed or they have the uh, potential or risk of being diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, they need to learn a lot. 
Um, so having the resources round the clock uh, through a, a digital experience like breastcancer.org is invaluable. Uh, our organization is committed to providing the guidance people need to make the best decisions for their care. And we really are a trusted digital resource that nearly 12 million patients and caregivers from around the world are coming to our website every year. Um, and just our mission in general is really to help people make sense of the complex medical and personal information about breast health and breast cancer so they can make the best decisions for their lives. We provide accurate and accessible and actionable health information. Um, we also have a patient and caregiver online support community where people can engage with and learn from others just like them. Um, and a few years ago, we started uh, what we call virtual meetups where people can meet in a, a moderated discussion um, so it's scheduled times where they can actually meet uh, virtually and, and talk through their diagnosis and, and their, their treatment options and plans uh, and get to know each other, to support each other. Um, we have medically reviewed breast cancer research updates on the latest medical advancements in breast cancer research findings and also clinical trial results. And we're providing all of this information in a variety of formats. So um, interactive virtual educational events. We have podcast series that we've been producing for years and a, a phenomenal library on a vast, vast uh, array of topics related to breast cancer. Um, videos animated videos, personal story videos, um, inspirational videos, uh, content. We have deep, robust content on everything and anything related to breast cancer um, and patient stories. And as I said, discussion forums. Um, and our discussion forums have been uh, on the site and available way before the social media and Facebook was, was even uh, a thought. People can come to our website and consume the information that they need. We have, as I said, um, nearly 12 million people coming to our site every year. And uh, they are consuming different content. So they'll come back frequently um, they'll come to the community, uh, discussion forums where they can register. They can register to uh, engage in conversation in the discussion forums. They can register to receive more personalized information that's really relevant for their needs based on their, their diagnosis um, and their treatments. Um, they can sign up for newsletters to receive our monthly newsletters or our research news newsletter. Um, as I said, you know, that's the breaking news on an ongoing basis in, in breast cancer research. Uh, so there's a lot of different options uh, as, as people are coming to the site and would like to receive uh, information. Yes, first, a, a huge thanks to Wix.com for all of the support over the years, not only um, financially, but in the collaborative spirit of exchanging information in order to um, you know, improve our content, to provide our, our audience and the people coming to our website with information that, that is relevant to hair loss and wigs, uh, hair care, um, you know, so again, thank you for, for everything that Wix.com has done for breastcancer.org. Uh, the donations and funds that we receive are used by our team to create 
are award-winning programs. And as I said, they're designed to support the millions of patients and caregivers coming to breastcancer.org each year. So we are uh, good, solid stewards of the funds and donations that we receive. Our entire site is written for the patient and for caregivers. It's designed specifically with them in mind. Um, and we have easy to find navigation of content areas. So as um, you're on our website, if you are newly diagnosed or you're in treatment or you just finished treatment or you're a caregiver and you want to um, go through that navigation that will take you to that information that's most relevant for you uh, based on, on where you're at in your treatment. Um, there's uh, educational learning modules that we have sections dedicated to uh, informing people just about breast cancer in general, the types of breast cancer, because we know that there are many different types of breast cancers uh, and the treatment options vary based on those types of breast cancer. Um, so they can learn about the treatment options based on the types of breast cancer, um, surgery, side effects, like managing hair loss and solutions to hair loss like like wigs. So we have a section dedicated to wigs. Um, you know, they, there's deep, deep content um, educational, informational content on the site, as well as in our community discussion forums. And um, as I mentioned, this is where peers exchange information and support, um, and they can connect with people like them. So we have uh, currently 84 different forums. So if you have HER2 positive breast cancer and you want to connect with that group, you can join that forum and read the exchanges. If you sign up and register to engage in conversation, you can join that conversation. Um, and all of the discussion forums are moderated uh, by our moderation team, um, where our moderators are providing support as well as if there's information or questions that um, arise in our forums our moderators are there to provide links to content so people can uh, educate and inform themselves uh, in the most careful way. Yeah, I um, I will I will share my personal story as well as my breastcancer.org experience. Um, I, we know at breastcancer.org that caregivers need a trusted resource like breastcancer.org where they can learn about their loved one's specific type of breast cancer and the treatment options and the path to help get them the best care possible for their the best possible outcome and for caregivers it's it can be an overwhelming place to be as well because they don't know enough about um, their loved one's uh, specific diagnosis or treatment. They're, if they're not in every appointment with them, and there are many appointments with many different types of, of uh, healthcare professionals on the medical team. And that's where I would say, you know, even just from my personal experience, I'm one of six kids in my family and I saw how each one of my siblings um, navigated through my diagnosis and, and my, my care. I, I, uh, I had a pretty rough go of uh, you know, my treatment and um, there was a, a lot of surgeries, there was a lot of chemotherapies, there were um, different treatments, a lot of medications I had to take and many and i watched all of them and in, in their own ways they were my caregivers some more than others um, but you know the fact that i could point them to 
information on breastcancer.org that they could understand uh, was helpful for me as a patient because I just sent them to the site and said, here's the type of breast cancer I have. This is why I do need chemotherapy. This is why I am going to lose my hair. And this is why I know that, you know, I need to take these next steps to get myself, you know, um, better mm -hmm. and get the right treatment. Uh, so again, you know, having that, the resources to be able to share with caregivers is so, it's priceless. Just before the pandemic, um, breastcancer.org started to stand up our, our patient insights research program. Um, you know, COVID-19 really uh, put people in a, in a different place. Um, and, and we knew that um, there were some significant impact to uh, people with cancer and our breast cancer audience and population were really struggling with um, and finding the care. Uh, so it had a big impact on their care. Um, so we kicked off in 2020, um, our first real solid uh, comprehensive program around uh, patient insights. Um, and it was on the topic of COVID-19 and the impact on breast cancer care. Um, we have thousands of people who are dedicating time to share their insights in, in a carefully designed research surveys. And that was one of the first surveys that we really launched in, in a big way. Um, took the survey results, published on the website in a, a special report and then um, hosted a, a town hall virtual event uh, to discuss the findings and bring subject matter experts in uh, to really discuss the findings of what our patient population was sharing with us. Um, from that, we saw that there was great benefit to our patient audience. So, each year since we we have focused on a specific topic that is impacting the breast cancer population. So um, in addition to the COVID-19 and, and impact on breast cancer care, we've had topics like diversity in clinical trials, the cost of breast cancer care, informed consent was another uh, big topic as well. Um, and that was around uh, breast cancer surgery, it impacts everyone, right? If you've been diagnosed, uh, your fear of recurrence or managing the risk of recurrence uh, really impacts anyone that has been diagnosed um, in their lifetime. Now, that's a, it's a great question. Um, so our editorial team um, spends months working on on the topic. So right now they're digging deep into uh, recurrence. We closed out the survey uh, at the end of August. Um, in addition to the survey, the team is also conducting interviews, um, interviewing subject matter experts, patients, other organizations um, to really capture the most comprehensive view uh, on that topic. Um, from that, then the the, the town hall we uh, we do have our town hall participants selected. Um, the registration for the town hall is active, so we can share that link, um, and you can see who will be participating in that town hall event. Um, of course, our Founder and Chief Medical Officer Dr. Marisa Weiss will will also be uh, participating in that town hall. Well, everyone's diagnosis is different. Every everyone's lives are different. 
So um, really just the urgent demand of making decisions about your care, it's very personal. And coupled with the lack of knowledge about the type of cancer and the treatment options and the speed at which um, the, the healthcare system might present that, that patients need to make information, make choices, make, it's all very, very confusing and, and an overwhelming situation. And, and that's really where information and support become critically important. Uh, we do work in tandem with the patient's care team by providing easy to understand explanation of the diagnosis, the treatment options, what to expect, uh, what to prepare for, you know, how to ask questions and answers to all of the other complex decisions that need to be made. Um, and really just thanks to the fact that we have digital resources, we're available around the clock. So uh, if a patient has left the doctor's office and forgot to ask a question or got some information that, that just doesn't, they don't understand, they can come to our website. So they're prepared for that next appointment with their, their healthcare team. The, the town hall is October 17th, and we'd be happy to share that, that registration link with, with you uh, and, and the audience. Um, as I said, we're, we're really focused on providing support around the clock all year long. But during the month of October, the world has really come to know this month as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, which starts on October 1st through the entire month. And this year, uh, we're focused on uh, empowering others to be leaders in their communities. So um, we like to say leaders lead with facts. And during the month, uh, while awareness is high, we know that knowledge is, is pretty low. So this is where um, you can come in. And this, this month is a great time to really broach the topic with your loved ones. If, if you haven't before, talk about um, breast cancer, talk about the risks, if there's family genetics and genetic risks, um, and, and really just uh, be more aware. Um, and people can follow us on social media. We'll be sharing personal stories every day throughout the month. Um, and then uh, one other new new program that I'd like to just tout for a moment, because uh, as I said, donors and funders and supporters like Weeks.com and individuals contributing $5 or $50 or, or whatever they can, um, this all supports our programs. Um, and this year, something new our board has generously pledged to match donations for the month up to $50,000 that we can share with, with donors of any size that want to make a contribution to support our programs and our board will match up to $50,000. Yeah, just ongoing. I mean, our, our ongoing goal is to reach more people to provide more support for more people um, and and offer in a, a personalized experience because I said no two cancers are, are the same. Um, so that personalized experience is, is really something that we're encouraging uh, people who are coming to our website to register uh, so they, they get more of that personalized experience. Um, and research is essential to uh, the development of improved healthcare. So um, we will continue to uh, support and um, include our in patients' insights research uh, in order to continue to improve care and overall better health outcomes.
Right. And partnering with with leading cancer centers um, like Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, to conduct our original cross-sectional research surveys on those topics that are important to the breast cancer community. Um, so we are continuing to uncover unmet needs of patients and provide unique insights to help advance care. It's multiple, it's, it's so hard to define one unmet need um, because as I said, each cancer is, is uh, different and each person Mm -hmm. is different. So um, there, there are so many different needs based on the individual. I would just encourage people, if you have not spent any time on breastcancer.org to come to our website, spend some time reading the latest information um, learn about breast cancer, schedule your mammogram, and encourage your friends and families to do the same. Um, and as we we often say, awareness is is really the the key. Um, awareness and knowledge that breastcancer.org is able to share are made possible by people and organizations like wigs.com and individuals like you. Uh, so we hope that you will consider supporting our mission by joining our circle of support. So on our site that we have all of our social platforms linked right off the homepage. Thank you for mentioning that. I encourage uh, everyone to check out our website and, um, and join our, our, groups on all of our social platforms and um, and share the information readily. Um, we do have a, a partners resource page that we've created for partners like Wix.com and other partners. So we, uh, we will be sharing a lot of social posts and uh, links and hashtags, uh, information. Um, throughout the month about our events uh, and just uh, educational snippets like the personal stories every day. So a lot uh, will be happening and we have it all year long, but uh, just ramps up and gets more intense in the month of October.